Victoria Fritz in the business news this lunch. Let's cross over to the United States, where President Obama is giving a major speak, speech about Iran later. Uh, now, last month, a historic deal was made where the UN Security Council voted in favor of relaxing trade embargoes against Iran in exchange for guarantees that it rolls back its nuclear program. Obama is expected to give more details of the plans to lift sanctions against the country. If it is approved, the deal could open Iran up to massive waves of inward investment and also create a huge new market for Western exporters. Samira Hussain is at the New York Stock Exchange for us. Uh, Samira, there are plenty of people who think that this isn't necessarily a great idea. We're expecting heavy lobbying on both sides over the next month. Absolutely. So next month is when Congress is going to be voting on the Iran nuclear deal. And there is a lot of money being poured in on both sides in terms of supporting the deal and not supporting the deal. That's why President Obama is really making a big pitch uh, later today when he makes a speech at American University in favor of the Iran deal. Um, but you're seeing a lot of backlash and a lot of people, even within the Democratic Party, that are that are speaking up against the deal. And so we're going to see a lot of this happening back and forth um, in the next month in the lead up to the congressional vote. Is there any sense of which way this might go? I mean, is it likely to get through? Uh, well, you know, right now there are some that believe the White House is somewhat resigned itself to have to use the presidential veto power. So as long as it gets enough votes um, in Congress to be able to implement that, um, the White House has said that it is possible that they would go down that route. I mean, of course, ideally, they would want to get a clear vote in the House and in the Senate. Um, but at the moment, that may look a little bit uh, difficult. Mm, uh, Samir, we're going to leave it there. But thank you very much for joining us, Samir Hussein, in New York for us. Now, I'm not sure what you were doing when you were aged 13 or 14. But these children here, well, they've just been announced as the finalists of the Google Annual International Science Fair. Their inventions offer up solutions to things like clean water, disease detection, and low-cost satellite technology. So Lena de Mofte there. Now let's have a quick look at some of the other stories around for you today. Uh, it is still the engine of growth, but the contribution the service sector is making to the UK recovery is waning. Uh, business services, which are anything from architects to accountants, for example, reported the weakest rate of expansion in three years, according to a survey today. Now tomorrow, the Bank of England will unveil its latest growth, unemployment and inflation forecast. So a lot of that information will be fed in. Uh, the number of UK workers who are routinely working nights is on the rise, according to the TUC. Its research says that the number has increased by 200,000 since 2007 to just under 3.2 million people. And Greek air traffic controllers have gone on strike at the height of the holiday season. Flights across the country have been cancelled and airports are warning of severe delays. And the controllers want to see their government agency replaced with an independent version in line with EU rules. A difficult time for anyone going to Greece at the moment. Uh, let's have a quick look at the markets. The FTSE up about 1% at the moment. It's been boosted by better than expected results from both the London Stock Exchange and also legal and general as well. And a bit of a rebound in the mining sector. And just to show you the copper price at the moment, that there is at a six-year low. It's been hit by concerns over demand for China and also the prospect of an interest rate rise both here in the UK and also the US as well. So that's how the markets are faring at the moment. I'll see you in an hour's time. Victoria, thank you. Hello, I'm Victoria Fritz. In the business news, uh, working in high finance is all about testosterone, deadlines and stress, right? Well, there are some people in finance who are trying to prove that that doesn't have to be the case. Helena Morrissey was appointed chief executive of the global finance firm Newton Investment Management at the age of 35. Managing 400 employees and £50 billion worth of clients' money, you'd be right in thinking that she has a fair amount on her plate. But now consider the fact that she has nine children. You'd be forgiven for thinking that she doesn't have any time at all to do anything else. But no, five years ago, she launched this, the 30% Club, which aims to drive up the number of women serving on boards in the UK to 30%. Two years later, she was awarded a CBE for her services to British business. On the BBC's Business Live programme this morning, we asked her what it takes to be a good leader. 
Let's have a quick look at some of the other stories around for you today. It's still the engine of growth, but the contribution that the service sector makes to the UK recovery is waning. Our business services, which encompass a range of professions from architects to accountants, reported the weakest rate of expansion for three years. That's according to a survey today. Now, tomorrow, the Bank of England will unveil its latest growth, employment and inflation forecasts. The number of workers who routinely work night shifts are on the rise, according to the TUC. The research says that the number has increased by 200,000 since 2007 to just under 3.2 million people. And Greek air traffic controllers have gone on strike at the height of the holiday season. Flights across the country have been cancelled and airports are warning of severe delays. The controllers want to see their government agency replaced with an independent version that's more in line with EU rules. Let's check in with the market, see what's going on at the moment. The FTSE is up 45 points at the moment. It's been boosted by better than expected uh, earnings really from London Stock Exchange and also from legal in general uh, today. Now, both of them doing really rather well. And we've had a little bit of a rebound in the mining sector but it is coming off real lows if you look at the copper price for example that is at a six-year low at the moment hit by concerns over demand coming from China and also the prospect of interest rate rises in the world's biggest economy the US I'm gonna have more on all those numbers in an hour's time so I'll see you then. To hear it. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, we're big in, uh, in debate about Helena Morrissey there, you yeah. see. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, joining me now to speak about all of this is Bronwyn Curtis, the chair of the Society of Business Economists. She joins us in our newsroom. Thank you very much for coming in, Bronwyn. Let's start with legal in general. How is it that a company like this is able to deliver such good news, such good profits? And obviously, investors are liking what they're hearing. The share's up 2.5% today. Given how much harder it is for them to make money in the UK market, well, they've obviously they've increased their dividend as well, as did the London Stock Exchange that you were just talking about. So that's given a boost to um, investors. But of course, they have all this new regulatory um, change coming, and that will impact their businesses. But they've been changing their businesses. At LNG, instead of individual annuities, they've been looking to take on the risks of you know, big corporate pension schemes, the bulk annuity market as it's called. So they take on the risk of um, those pensioners that are already being paid out, they take on a bulk of assets and they get a premium for that and they're looking for more of that business because they see that as a better business line. They've also increased their assets under management. So they are fundamentally changing the way in which the business is operating. Uh, let's move on and talk on a little bit about the mining industry and what's going on there. We've seen huge falls in recent days when it comes to the miners. That has been depressing uh, the value of the FTSE because many of the UK miners uh, are actually here. They're listed in this country, although their operations are clearly elsewhere. But we've seen a little bit of a rally today when it comes to the mining stocks. BHP up about 3%. What is this about? Is this that fears of China have, you know, are being forgotten or is it that these shares are now undervalued? Well, a little bit of bottom fishing. Um, markets have never... <laughs> I, could call, I could call it a dead cat bounce, is what we usually call it. You know, you hit the bottom, then it bounces up a bit. But it's always hard to tell. You know, when they come down so much, there are people out there looking for value, and there will be some investors think there is value at these levels. Of course, the China story is not over, and of, co and of course, if the US looks like they're going to raise rates and that story comes back again that also we could see the miners on the slide again uh, and let's talk about the London Stock Exchange there's some very bullish comments coming up from Xavier Rolle today the chief executive he was on the program at 11:45. he was saying that he thinks that the UK economy is going to have the fastest growth of all the G7 countries he says that there's a lot of growth when it comes to UK companies. How is it that the London Stock Exchange is able to make money from the companies that are listed on the exchange? Well, they have a variety of businesses, of course. Um, they don't just own, it's not just the London Stock Exchange, it's Borsa Italiano. They also have an index business. Now, they bought Frank Russell in the US uh, because they want to expand in the US and they have a lot of indices. The Russell 2000 is the small cap. Um, index that a lot of people know about but that's one of the reasons that um, they have made a, a big step up in profits this time because buying Frank Russell has helped their business so looking at indexes as well as exchanges I would say 
Uh, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Really interesting comments from Bronwyn Curtis there. Now, the US markets are faring well. They're breaking a three-day slump over there. Positive raft of data coming out. Time Warner, for example, is making more money out of Batman and Mortal Kombat video games. Now, tomorrow is what the currency traders are already calling Super Thursday. The Bank of England is going to be the first big central bank to combine the release of the minutes from its rate-setting meetings with a set-piece document that influences its policy. For traders, that probably means a lot of volatility for the value of the sterling. There's going to be a lot of information forecasts on economic growth, inflation and the jobs market, as well as the latest decision on interest rates. But don't worry, I'm going to be at the Bank of England tomorrow from midday to help you work through it. So I'll see you then. Thanks, Thanks Victoria. See you later.